welcome to my channel welcome to my garage this is Rick's garage and this is going to be my last video on the Ducati motorcycle by Tamiya what I'm going to go through on this video is my thoughts and opinion between the hobby design detail upset and the top studio detail upset and I'll also go over the uh, decals that you can also get uh, from hobby design so let's start off with going between the differences between, let me get this one out of the way. Let's go between the differences between these two detail upsets. Now they're both uh, metal details and they're both excellent. So bottom line suggestion and recommendation, get them both because you can mix and match between the two and you will be able to create a really great looking bike. Uh, they do have, though, their little slight differences. Uh, with the hobby design, you get the, uh, the chain. You are able to create the 3D uh, metal uh, heat sink. And you have the exhaust springs. And you have the license plate. And you can also get the little detail logo that goes onto the handlebar. You get these little metal details as well. Uh, the metal fan. You get the uh, correct uh, metal plate that has the Ducati supercharge that goes onto the bike. Uh, other than that, and, uh, and other than that, that's the only real big difference that Top Studio does not have. What Top Studio has that Hobby Design does not have is that it has the metal handlebars, uh, little grips at the very end that you can put on, uh, more detail and grids and grills that go onto the radiator cover, and you can create a metal piston for the suspension. Uh, it also has a host, a tremendous amount of metal details that you can put onto the engine. I mean, a lot more than what you can get onto the top studio, excuse me, onto the hobby design. Uh, I think that Top Studio has a better way of creating the, uh, the brake discs. But other than that, that's the only difference between the two. Uh, with Hobby Design, and I do have a video on this, um, is creating the, the chain here, which is a static chain. This is extremely difficult to do. Uh, the first time I did it, I failed. The second time I did it, was 100% better than the first time, but not to the quality that I that I wanted. So I am going to be continuing to uh, build this until I can get to a technique where I am able to uh, build this a chain to a high perfection. Probably not as equal to what you would see on the plasma channel, which is the channel that I originally uh, was trying to build my bike against, um, using it as as a baseline build but um, trying to get it to at least a higher standard than what I have currently. Uh, with the Top Studio, uh, I was disappointed in a couple of things. And I mean, just roll in just a little bit here. All right, um, with the Top Studio, let's start with the handlebars. What they want you to do is they want you to take the handlebar plastic part and cut off the end. Then they want you to drill, I think it's a 0 0.6 millimeter uh, hole into the, uh, into the plastic so the metal part can go into the, into the, uh, into the handlebar. Uh, first of all, you, you can't use your sprue cutter for this. You're going to need, a, need to do a hobby saw so you can get a nice clean cut. Okay, no problem. Your big problem is going to be centering that hole into the plastic perfectly, straight and centered, so that this piece can go in. And unless you have a drill press, in my opinion, you're not going to be able to do it. Unless, of course, you are an expert builder like uh, the Plasma Channel, you're not going to be able to do it without a drill press. So personally, I skipped this step. I did not do that. What I did on mine was I just took some uh, chrome paint and uh, AK Extreme Chrome and chrome the end of the handlebars. And quite frankly, um, you really can't tell the difference except on the plastic, it doesn't have this little detail here and there's a little detail indent there on the end. But other than that, you really can't tell. Um, if I get a drill press, 
I might try this again. The other thing that I felt was a disappointment was the piston that goes in for the suspension. This is a full metal part. And this is the original plastic. Whoops, can't see. This is the full metal part. And this is the plastic that comes with the kit. What they want you to do is they want you to cut the plastic eyelet off of this piece, cut that off, and they want you to attach it to the metal part. Really? I mean, if you're going to make a metal piston, why not make the whole darn thing metal from the eyelet all the way down to the end? I mean, what, 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 what was the, the reason of not making this whole one piece of metal? It didn't make any sense. Even when you're putting these gears on here, you can still make this a metal piece that goes right on top. And then maybe you have to, you know, super glue the two metals together. But it didn't make any sense that, that why this piece could not be a full metal piece. Um, so I, I skipped that step. Uh, the other thing, too, that, that was really irritating is that, I don't know if you can see, let's zoom in a little bit more, is that they want you to take this plastic piece right here and they want you to drill... I think it's a uh, 0 0.6 or 0 0.3 or 0 0.3 or 0 0.6 millimeter hole into the plastic that you cut off so they can go onto the top lug of the metal piece. Really? Uh, this piece is extremely tiny. Um, I, I guess it could be done like, again, if, if you're a master builder like uh, the Plasma Channel, you're not going to be able to get that a hole centered straight so that it would fit correctly onto this metal piece. So I skipped this whole entire thing here. I just used the static, or not the static, I just used the uh, the, the base plastic um, part that came with the kit. So um, that was a disappointment. Uh, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't do this either. And the reason why I didn't is that they want you to cut this off. Let me bring it over here. They want you to cut the tops off here, off of these pieces. The problem is that these plastic pieces are molded together. And they're molded in a way that it makes it very, very difficult to actually cut them off. Uh, you'll actually, you'd have to look at the, the part to know exactly what I'm talking about. But there is really, at least I couldn't figure out, a, a really good clean way of actually removing it. It's not as clean as a cut as you see here in the diagram. It's not how that part is made. So uh, I didn't do that. What I did do was I drilled a hole into the uh, into the plastic, and then I took um, their their hose. I took their metal metal top, and um, I was able to get that hose in there without a problem. And uh, so I, I made that modification and uh, onto the bike. In fact, I did it on both bikes, the bike that I did the first time and on the second round. And then my first bike on the videos, you'll see um, that I actually did that. But uh, those are the two main differences between the top studio and the hobby design. Bottom line is get them both. And uh, you'll, you'll have a really great looking bike if you use uh, parts from both of these detail upsets, mix and match, and you'll end up with a really, really great bike. Okay, let's um, switch over now to the decals. Uh, the decals, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Uh, the decals are pretty good. Um, I'm going to put a picture up on the, uh, on the screen here to show uh, what I started off with in terms of the cows. And uh, so I painted the whole thing red in the color of the desk for the Italian red. And then you'll notice, too, that I painted the bottom part black like I did on my first bike. I didn't use the black uh, decal. I just, uh, I just went ahead and masked it off and, and painted it. And then I put on a couple of uh, layers of clear coat. And then I let that dry for about, um, and, and cure for about, you know, four or five days. Then I put the, de uh, the decals on. I'm going to bring that over for you. And these are the decals. This is what the, the cows look like with the decals. And they come out pretty good. Not a problem. As you can see, they came out pretty perfect. Um, the problems that I have is with the decals is, A, it was, it was real time consuming to get uh, the decals on. 
Uh, let me bring the decal back over here and you can see what I'm talking about. This is all one decal. Whoops. This is all one piece. And you got to be very, very, very careful when you're applying the decal onto the cowl because you, this is very easy to tear here. And it's very easy as you're trying to position this green stripe in, into position that you can actually tear it down here as well because this is separate from this piece. Okay. So that was, that was a problem. The other problem was, is trying to align this blank area here, which is really the red stripe that goes across here to line up with the uh, rivet uh, indents that go along the bottom of the, of the cowl. If you get this to align up perfectly, then the top part here and on the curvatures here and here and over in this area become out of alignment. So when you try to align it to the curvatures here and here, you're going to misalign the red. So this is really kind of not uh, constructed accurately or to a fine point because if you can see, I don't know if the camera can bring it up or not, but you can see the indent. Whoops. You can see the indent here in the white area. Then there's one uh, rivet here that's in the red. And then of course you see another one here that's on the side. So you might be thinking, well, Rick, you didn't uh, move the decal up far enough and you didn't tilt it in the way that you needed to tilt it. All right. I thought the same thing. But when I was trying to tilt and maneuver and, and move the decal over so that the red line went right through the center of where these rivets were, it misaligned these curvatures. So it's a little bit off. There's no way. If you're going to make the red line go across where all the rivets are, as it, as it really should, as, it, as it's um, shown in, on the box, then you're going to have misalignment in these curvatures. You're going to see the, um, the plastic. Uh, you're going to have a, the, the decal is going to be short from the plastic. It's going to have uh, a misalignment here. And the curvature of this piece is also going to be misaligned. Okay. And uh, there's a couple other areas where it's going to be misaligned. So you're just going to have to uh, try to do the best you possibly can, which is what I did. I did the best I possibly could. I focused mainly on trying to get the decal to match the curvature of the piece of the cowl perfectly. And then um, moved, uh, placed the green stripe to where it should go and then dealt with the rest of it as best as I possibly could. Uh, once you've got into the position that you feel is, is as best as you possibly can in terms of the curvature of the decal against the curvature of the cowl, uh, it took me about 20 minutes to do, 15 to 20 minutes to do. So I was constantly dunking this in water to keep the decal moist. I was using Microsole uh, to, uh, to make it... Um, uh, to move around the uh, the plastic a lot easier, and then um, once I was satisfied with the placement, then I went through with a cotton swab, uh, tried to uh, get it all down nice and smooth, get all the air bubbles out, and then uh, started using uh, Microset and Microsol to soften the the decal. Once the decal was softened up pretty well, I then started using uh, Tamiya Mark Fit Strong so that the decal would be able to wrap around as best as it possibly could around the curvature ends of the of, of the plastic. Um, that was also extremely difficult to do because in my example of what I did or how I put the decal on, I had very, very little overlap. So this is the back side here. You'll notice that there's not that much overlap. Okay. On, on some of these curves, there's pretty good overlap here. 
but there's no overlap on any other part of the back of the plastic and there's very very little overlap right here so that when I was putting this uh, on there's a little bit of I don't know wrinkle at the very edge I don't know if you can see it or not but the very edge here there's a little bit of a wrinkle and no matter how much micro fit star excuse me uh, mark fit strong I put on that uh, I couldn't get rid of that little wrinkle, but once it's on the bike and uh, You're looking at it normally. You're really not going to see it all that well So that's just a little minor detail. It's a little minor thing uh, it Depends upon how well your OCD acts up on you uh, but uh, I do have OCD a little bit, but it's not uh, crazy So I'm uh, I'm totally fine with that and let me bring up the other cal here as well I didn't have that uh, wrinkling effect too much on this one. This one here came out all just, just basically perfect. And you can also see that the red line for the rivets went on there also pretty well. So this one went on fine in terms of the rivets and uh, the curvature of the, of the piece. But this one here, I just couldn't, I could not get. And you'll notice that the rivets and the red line do not really match up all that well. So uh, that's, um, that's my experience with the decals. Uh, this one here, uh, that, that, this came out perfectly. This whole entire uh, piece right here with the red and the black, uh, excuse me, not the red, but the green line and the black, this is all one decal. And that came out just fine. It took a long, long time. It took a lot of Mark Fit Strong to uh, get all the wrinkles out on the, uh, on the top here but you'll notice that it, it went on fine and went on perfect have no problems and really nothing negative to say about that decal uh, would I do this again in terms of the decals no I would not uh, I prefer the airbrush I think the airbrush comes out a lot better than putting a full uh, cowl decal on it um, for the reasons I already stated with the problem with the decals and the red stripe uh, you're not going to obviously have that problem when you're painting it. The other uh, reason why I would airbrush it is that I think I get a more smooth and glassy look on a painted surface than I do with a decal surface. Um, so that's just my, my personal opinion on that. In terms of all the other decals uh, that, that come with the kit, no, they're perfect. They're just like any other decal, I put them on. Uh, there are two different variants that you can use one that is a bring this out a little bit one is a full color version which is what we're well, i'm building the uh, red white and green and then of course you've got a a black version uh which is just um black and a couple other colors on there the, the metal colors for the engine and so on and then you have your uh decals for that that they uh, recommend on where to put them and their suggestions but um other than that, that's my that's my thoughts on the two. Um, again, if I were to do this bike again or any other bike, I would uh, airbrush and then I would put the decals on. I would not do a full cal decal. I just think that uh, airbrushing, you know, as much as you can airbrush, uh, the better I think it, it turns out. Airbrushing and masking, I think, turns out far better than a decal does. Okay. Um, that's it. Those are my opinions on the uh, on the detail upset and the decals. Um, I do want to pause a little bit here, and I want to thank you, those of you who have subscribed to my channel. Um, I'm I'm overwhelmed of, uh, of it. I really am. When I first did this channel, I was doing it just to play around. Um, I was building uh, diecast models uh, from. Uh, uh, Agora and IXO and Fan Home and so on and I was building these uh, cars uh, for family and friends and I thought that I would put a video up on, on a YouTube channel so that they can see how their uh, model was coming along and uh, I was getting uh, quite a few views uh, one of my uh, videos I think it's on, on the Porsche has got uh, I think uh, like uh, a fourth uh, over a thousand uh, views on it and I was only I only had about maybe eight or nine ten uh, subscribers which is about as far as I thought it was going to go because that was the amount of models I was building or the people I was going to give models uh, to in the future and all of a sudden 
I started to see my subscription number increase. And then I did a series of uh, videos on the Sterling kit, the, the tanking robot, and I saw my uh, subscription number rise a little bit more. And then as more and more videos came out on the diecast model, uh, again, I saw some uh, more subscriptions and, and I, was, I was amazed about the number of subscriptions I was getting. I'm now at 103 as at the time of this uh, video is being recorded. And for all you 103 subscribers, I thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate uh, all of you and uh, really want to thank you for that. It's really encouraging that I've got that many people that are following the, the channel. Um, I never really thought I would get higher than, than 10, let alone uh, 103. And how many subscribers I'm going to get uh, throughout the, the life of the channel, I, I don't know. Uh, but it is really, really encouraging that I do have it. And I want to thank you all. And for all those that are uh, haven't subscribed and are just viewing the channel, if you're part of the 1,000 or, or 400 or 500 uh, that some of these videos are receiving, I thank you very much for viewing them and watching them. And uh, if you watch them more than once, I really do appreciate that as well. And um, uh, But I just wanted to pause here and thank all the people that have subscribed, all the people that have been watching this uh, channel. I just wanted to uh, reach out and, and say thank you. Uh, you're very much appreciated. And if there's any suggestions or comments that you would like to give to the to give to me about the channel, please put them down in the comment section. Um, I do read them all, and um, I will reply to as many as I possibly can. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to reach out to everyone and say thank you so much. I'm at 103, and I really don't know how far it's going to go. But that was that's really really encouraging. Okay, so thank you again for the scribers and thank you again for all you viewers. And uh, once again, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, have a great day. Always have fun in your garage or your workshop, your kitchen, your living room, wherever it is that you build your models. Always have fun. And we'll see you next time. Take care.